We'd like to uh, celebrate with all of us uh, our, our deputies of old and our deputies of new. This is a great honor, as you know and can imagine, for me. Um, I would ask each of you to raise your right hand. Um, repeat after me when it says your name, please state your name. That's the only tricky part. Um, I, please state your name. I, Charles Pedro Martinez. Uh, I believe you said Pedro Martinez. <laughs> um, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. To the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Will support the Constitution thereof. Will support the Constitution thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I also want to just say one thing about Pedro Martinez. Um, so, like many people, uh, I was introduced to the Boston Red Sox when I was 10 years old by my grandfather, uh, who was blind and, and relatively unable to move. He had a bad case of polio. And he used to sit with the radio, a transistor radio, on a table in, uh, in my mom, my grandmother, and my grandfather's home, listening to the Red Sox games all the way through the summer. And when you listen to a Red Sox game on the radio with a guy who's blind, it's really different than with anybody else because there's an intensity that comes with that because you can't watch TV. So for him, this was special. And he knew every player, he knew all the statistics, he knew everything, which absolutely blew me away as a 10-year-old because uh, I really just had no concept of how he picked up all that data and that information, but he just sucked it all up and, and introduced me to, uh, to the Red Sox in a very special way. And like a lot of big fans, he died before they ever won uh, the World Series. And you know, he was there in 46, he was there in 67 with me, I was there with him in 75. He was gone by 86, but boy, he was the first person I thought of when things didn't work out quite the way they were supposed to. And, uh, and in 2004, when these guys came back and beat the Yankees, yeah! Yeah. God, that was sweet. And then they took the Cardinals in four games. The first thing I did, this is no joke, when they won that final game, was I just looked up and I said, well, Grandpa, it finally happened. <laughs> I go all the way back to Worcester. I, I would like to thank um, everyone that's here supporting you know, the cause and, and uh, my wife, all the, the people that, that have contributed to do this right along with you. You have one more, one more partner right here. How about that? Thank you. One more partner. So Worcester, continue to support this. You were the first town I ever touched in Boston and look where I ended up today. <laughs> so I'm forever attached to Worcester. And now that the Red, the Red Sox are gonna move the AAA team over here, uh, even more, I'll be linked to Worcester. I was introduced uh, to English really, really well by a teacher from here, from Boston, Massachusetts. And he went to teach us English, and his name was Stephen Lindemann. And I remember that he told me all about the pesky ball. And he told me all about what the Red Sox went through. And then all of a sudden, I ne I'm never thinking that I'm gonna somehow end up in Boston. And then in 1997, like you said, I landed here in Worcester with Dr. Papas, and the story begins. And, and I was fully aware of it. To, for everybody here that might be surprised, I was fully aware of what happened to Boston and the 75 World Series and all that and, and, and the 67 and all that. I was fully aware because he would, he would put on the game and they would talk over and over and over and over about the suffering of Boston. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> we have a group of guys that's a spoil in this town. It brings back so many memories, but at the same time, I was, I was so loaded in my shoulders knowing that I was brought over with the assignment to break a curse that seemed unbreakable at that time. And 
thanks to God, we, we were probably crazy enough or idiots enough to, to not, not pay attention to so much negativity. But uh, now that I see all those moments and I, and, I, and I go back to some of those moments uh, when I was playing here, uh, the negativity around and all that, it, it, it's a great sense of satisfaction to know that you were chosen to be here to do that and you're able to do it for a hometown that's so unique. Boston is the most unique fan base that I've ever seen in baseball. If you'd like, um, I think we'd all love to hear like, okay, so fast forward, we get to 2004, you're down three games to none. I was in the game, by the way, I was there, I didn't leave. My 20 year season ticket holder partner left in the ninth inning. He said, I can't watch the Yankees win in Fenway. I said, oh, I'll stick around. So what are you guys thinking at that point? Down three, bottom of the ninth. You know, uh, you don't even stop to think. You just want to react. But if I tell you my honest feeling, <laughs> should I? Sure. I wanted to fight the Yankees. <laughs> I wanted to have something done, something weird. I wanted to drill someone so that we could change something around. And we never seemed to catch a break. Like in 03, we thought we had them. Everything was going like according to what we wanted, Charles, and you were there. And it just didn't pan out. And I'll tell you what, though. I don't think it would have been as sweet to beat them the next year if we didn't suffer like we did in 03. Like, literally, I wasn't going to give the Yankees the opportunity to see my tears, but deep in my heart, I was, I was devastated. I was so angry. And then in 04, we go to the same, pretty much, struggles. And I'm so angry, I'm like, and some of those guys uh, actually went public in the papers. And when you are in the, in the field, when you're with the players, you gotta be cautious. You, gotta, you have to hold uh, you know, any comment that you might, may have because you don't know who's gonna end up with it. They said, it will be sweet to send them home tonight and sweep them. That's what they said. And I took that like, we played you hard all year. We, we have been playing you hard every single day and you still don't have respect for us. I took the paper, I had a players meeting only because what I was about to say, let's drill a couple of them. <laughs> yeah, I honestly, I honestly, that's what I wanted, especially those guys that were popping off. I, I wanted to start a fight or something, just so that they get at least a scratch or something. No, you're not going home just, you know, empty handed. <laughs> Let me give you a couple of fists and see what happens. But, um, you know, the reason we enjoy so much that 04 is probably because of the suffering that, that we went through. And not only that 03 team, in 75, I know they were hurt. I mean, they got beat, but, but nobody wants to, to lose in a World Series. And uh, for us to really taste the 04 one, we had to actually go through what we went on three. I think that's, uh, that, that's the, the only way we could have a little bit of a payback and then still brag about it. And now, we are the ones to be. We are the ones that they have to come and do. To sign and take pictures and stuff. But when they said, I'm gonna take it to my, my family's grave and bury it. I was like, what? <laughs> well, my dad wanted to see a championship so bad that I'm gonna go to the burial and put that jersey in there. I'm like, oh, do I really need to sign that? <laughs> but uh, to that extreme, uh, the, the people here in Boston love their baseball. And they are aware, just like you, and we heard the governor say that his dad never saw it, but I know that deep in their hearts, a lot of those souls were there with us and, and they wanted to see it. They saw it in a, in, in a different way, but so much respect, so much respect for that. I, I, bringing that to Boston is the biggest achievement by far in my entire life.